there's a lot about modern economic theory that's important but difficult to understand. In fact, many of the people formulating these theories don't really understand them, and that's why they can never explain anything clearly. But there is one core economic fact that everybody, even those of us with poor math skills, grasp instantly, and that's when we're getting poorer. How do you know when you're getting poor? Well, you know you're getting poor when you don't have enough money to do the things that you once did. You are moving backward. It is a very scary feeling. Nothing makes Americans poorer faster than inflation does. Now, finance moguls who borrow money for a living love inflation. It makes their debt cheaper. It's a good thing for them. But everyone else hates it because it crushes them in ways that are very obvious day to day. So with that in mind, the new inflation numbers are out, and they're the worst this country has seen in nearly 40 years. According to the Consumer Price Index, inflation is up almost 7% over the past 12 months. It's very high. The problem is the reality is much worse than that, and that's because the Consumer Index is useless as a guide to life in America. It doesn't actually measure the cost of living. In that way, it is a lie. It's a rigged government number, one of many. Now, the CPI is calculated by assigning relative weight to different categories of goods. It's a very complex series of formulas. Some of them were formulated in good faith. Others were designed to deceive you. But in effect, the bottom line is the CPI does a very bad job of measuring how much it actually costs to live in this country. For example, gas prices. In the CPI, gas prices constitute less than 4% of the total value of the products included. Now, that's realistic if you happen to live in, say, Manhattan, where pretty much nobody drives a car. But if you have a car and you drive more than a few miles to work every day, that's ridiculous. Because for you, gas prices are a far larger part of your budget. And yet all of this is ignored by the CPI. You don't need to be an economist to understand this. The bottom line is these are not accurate numbers but they were put together by people who we consider very smart. So you have to ask yourself, why are these numbers inaccurate? Think about it. The consumer price index measures the downside of federal economic policy. So let's say you printed too many US dollars. You wanted to fund useless programs and pay off your donors. Now, if you did that, you would devalue your own currency. You would cause inflation. Over time, you would impoverish your own population. Those would be the effects, but of course, you would want to hide those effects. You'd instead want to tell everybody that thanks to you, the economy is great. And the consumer price index allows politicians to do that. The CPI allows reckless, economically illiterate leaders to hide the mess they have made. It's a conflict of interest if there ever was one. It's like putting Bernie Madoff in charge of the audit committee. What do you think is going to happen if you do that? Fake numbers allow fake economists to tell a fake story about what's actually happening to the country. And they've definitely been doing that. In fact, there's only one accurate way to measure inflation, and somehow the Fed has not yet figured this out. Here it is. You ask yourself, what does it cost you to live in this country compared to what it cost you a year ago? It's not complicated. Do the math and you will see that the actual number, the rise in inflation, is not even close to the 7% that Washington is claiming. In the last year, the price of a used car, for example, has gone up by more than 30%. Beef prices have risen by 21%. Crude oil, up 55%. Dimensional lumber, 35%. Sugar, 33%. Corn, 39%. Palm oil, 43%. Do you drink coffee in the morning ever? Oh, too bad. The price of coffee has risen 108% in the last year. Do you like breakfast cereal? Oh, sorry, oats are up 114%. And those are just the numbers you see on the label at the grocery store. In addition to conventional inflation, consumers also face widespread shrinkflation. That's an informal term that economics, economists use for the stealth shrinking of consumer products. So companies sell you less for the same price. Have you bought a Snickers bar recently? If it seems a lot smaller than it used to, that's because it is. And those are just the products you buy. Most people in this country still live indoors, and the cost of living indoors has risen dramatically. $2,600 per month for a depressing little unit in a deeply crummy part of the state. That cost 800 bucks a year ago. So that's what was going on in this country when Jerome Powell and Joe Biden were telling you that inflation was transitory. These people don't buy things or are they just lying? 
Either way, everybody else knows exactly what's going on because it's impossible to ignore. One group that would never even consider believing numbers like these, crap like this, is investors. They're not looking at the consumer price index. They do this for a living and they know exactly what dangerous inflation looks like. And that's why they're buying hard assets. You see it everywhere. The median sales price of an existing single family home in Austin, Texas, increased 33.5% in a single year. The median price of a condo around Miami has gone up nearly 21%. Now, real estate in Dade County was already wildly overheated. Now it's a bonfire. Why is that happening? Simple, investors are afraid. Consider equities prices. The S&P 500 is up 28% in the last year. Now, if you're looking for the real inflation rate, that's a lot closer than the CPI is gonna get you. But if you wanna know what people who think about money for a living really think about the economy and the value of the US dollar, look at the value of cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is by definition a refuge from inflation. People buy Bitcoin when they decide the US dollar is no longer safe. What's happened in Bitcoin? It's up 164% in the past year. Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies is up 622%. So you should consider that a referendum on the strength of our economic system as judged by the people who know the system best because that's exactly what it is. So these are major changes to the US economy and they're very ominous. For financial journalists, there is no bigger story right now than this, what we just said. And yet amazingly, these shameless hacks are studiously ignoring it. For those who worry about growing inequality, inflation might actually be a salve up to a point. We're becoming Venezuela, but that's a good thing because your neighbor is gonna be every bit as poor as you are. So that's the current state of the cutting edge of financial journalism in this country.